What's up, this is Kobe with Sample Source back with another video. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the two strategies you can use to quit your job to go full-time at music production and when you should actually quit your job and when you shouldn't. So I'm gonna talk about the one way that I use and in retrospect, the way that I would have used if I had another chance to go at it. And before we hop into the video, if you wanna know the four offers that I make to artists to sell my beats for 250 to $1,000. It's exactly what I teach my students how to do. You can get a free course on that by going over to Instagram at Kobe Sample Source and DMing me the word offer. I'll send you over the course entirely for free. Make sure you take advantage of that. And now let's hop back into the video. Okay, so let's talk about the first way um, to quit your job, which is the way that I did. And so um, it was 2020 during the global pandemic and let's talk about all of the the things that happened so i was working a plumbing deliveries uh driver job I was making 2400 a month um and i was making 1200 a month from beats okay and um i had over 10,000 saved up in the bank and so um i was only making 2400 a month from the from the job but my expenses were really low like rent for me was uh was 460 so I could go and do this and and, and really like um, I, I had a roommate a little bit before that. So rent was like 230, but they had moved out. So, uh, you know, it, it was really breaking the bank at this point. Right. So um, so with these three conditions, it makes quitting my job incredibly easy. So um, so keep in mind, if you live in like California or uh, Paris or uh, New York or somewhere that's really, really expensive, then th these are not going to work. But um, just look at this. I, I had proof of concept. I'm already bringing in money from Beats. Uh, I already had money saved up that I've been saving up for quite some time. And then my expenses were really low. So uh, with those three conditions, that makes it very easy for me to quit my job. Um, so what I recommend doing is like if you don't have proof of concept, if you're not making any money at all from Beats, Quitting your job is a terrible idea. It doesn't matter where you're at. If you're just like, oh, I just need a break from uh, the corporate scene or something like that. I mean, that's that's fine, but you're going to want to get another job at some point because you don't know how to actually make money from beats. So uh, proof of concept is incredibly important. The next thing is that I see is that a lot of people quit their jobs and they say, how do I make money right now? Like, how do I bring in my paycheck this week? And I've never done it before. It's like, that's not going to work. That's not how it works. You can't just manifest it out of thin air. You have to know how to create money. And you do that by creating value. So if you've never created value before, um, then it's not going to work. Like you're, you're not going to be able to bring in money immediately. It takes time. And uh, the third thing, third thing that I see a lot, um, it's, not, it's not like the lower expenses, although that helps. But um, the third thing that's going to be an issue is if you don't have a social following. So um, you have to figure out like what works for you. Is it going to be um, is it going to be YouTube? Is it going to be uh, like TikTok? Is it going to be Instagram? Right. So you got to figure out like what works for you or maybe it's X, like either one of those. Figure out which social channel is going to work for you and then build on it. And it's going to take time. Like make sure you take like two years, maybe a year, maybe three years to build up your social channels before you quit so that your back is not against the wall so that whenever uh, you need to make rent, you can go and tap into your social fan base and um, go and make them an offer and they'll be open to it. So um, those are the three tips that I would say to do before you quit your job. Um, if you're replacing half your income like I was, it's going to be pretty easy to do. If you have low expenses, that's another reason it would be easy to do. But if you need to, if you live somewhere where it's going to cost you like four or five thousand a month cost of living, then it's going to take a lot longer and you're going to want to build this fan base up and get this proof of concept up much higher before you quit your job. So your numbers are going to look different. All right. So that was the first way to quit your job. So now let's talk about the second way to quit your job. So in retrospect, this is what I would have done. Um, at the time when I first quit my job, I was selling my beats for like 30 bucks, 50 bucks, 100 bucks. And then I had 250 as my um, offer. So let's write those numbers out. So 30, 50, 100. And then if you really want to get crazy as an artist, you know, you spend 250 with me. So <laughs> so that was the most that you could spend with me was 250. 
Nowadays, what I recommend doing is doing offers like this, 500, 750, 1000. And if, if that sounds crazy to you, I know it might sound crazy to you. It would have sounded crazy to me at the time, but this is way easier than this. So let's draw out the math to get to 3000 a month. If you're trying to get to 3000 a month, um, and you're going to sell for $50, $50. let's say your, your average cart value is 50 bucks. So we do 3000 divided by 50. You need 60 B sales. All right. So we need 60 sales over here. Now, if we're trying to get to 3000 a month with this, I mean, the math is pretty easy on that. We, we only need three sales. So my question to you today, is it easier to sell to three artists or is it or is it easier to sell to 60 artists? So um, it's easier to sell to three artists. That's way easier. You only have to find three people versus going out and finding 60 people a month. What I had to do was send 100 DMs a day. I had to send 100 DMs a day to go and identify 50 people a month to pay me $50. It would add up to 2,500. I was able to pay my rent, save some money. So that was very, very difficult. I didn't even realize that this was the wrong way to do it at the time, but it's incredibly difficult to do so. Now over here, it's a mental battle because a lot of people are going to say no. If only three are saying yes and you reach out to um, a thousand people a month, that means you get 997 no's. And the question is, can you handle 997 no's? Because for me, here's what I see. If somebody, if I get a thousand, if I do a thousand reach outs and I get uh, minus 997 no's, what am I left with? It's a really complicated equation. I'm left with three yeses. And so if I get three yeses times $1,000, that equals my goal of 3000 a month. And so it's, it's very simple math. A lot of people just won't break it down and they'll be like, oh, that makes way more sense. But with, with human nature, we hate, we hate negativity. And so we can't get past people saying no to us. If you can't get past this, then you'll never be successful. And that's that's not just in, in music, that's in life in general. Like a lot of people are gonna tell you no, and it's rejection after rejection after rejection. But uh, whether it's in your dating relationships, whether it's in um, your business life, whether it's in your personal life, or whether it's in music business, like people are going to say no, but if, they, if they're saying no, and you find a few people to say yes, then just look for no's because you know on the other side of those no's are the yeses, what we want. And so if we figure that out, that's the magic formula to making uh, money. So that's how I would have done it in retrospect. So um, this is, let me play out the math for three artists uh, or three producers that I've worked with in my program. So we had Marvin, we had uh, Jeremy, and then we had Kellen, all right? So let's look at fan bases. So Marvin has about 460 followers currently. Jeremy has around uh, 2,000 followers currently, and then Kellen has around 200 followers. And at the time, he had around 150. So um, what are they bringing in right now? So we got 1,000 in revenue. Oops. Um, Jeremy is bringing in 3,200 in cash collected, 4,800 in revenue. Um, and then Marvin is at 3K in revenue right now. And so um, social fan base, not very high. Social fan base, not very high. Social fan base, pretty good. So with Jeremy, we got to 2,000 a month within four weeks. Within the first month, we were at 2,000 a month because he had people he could tap in with. It's really quick. Marvin didn't, but in two weeks, he got from 1,400 a month to 3,000 a month. How did he do that? What was he selling? So his offer was 500 to 1,000. So he sold um, a few at 500, and then he sold two uh, two packages for 1,000 or 1,000 each. Whoops. So um, he was able to to get to 3,000 with just like four sales or so. So um, just keep in mind, it's like that's pretty easy to do actually. And most people said no, but we got a few people to say yes. And uh, then they put money down on the Zoom call and he was able to get to 3,000 a month. 
All right. So um, 3,200 a month, the offer that we are making to get to, uh, to 3,200 a month is 400. And so we're selling two a week. So that's about eight a month. So 400 to 800 is going to equal this number right here, 3,200. Four times eight is 32. All right. So um, with Kellen, we did not have a lot of, a lot of social followers. So um, we reached out to more people a day and we got three sales. And these were at um, 250. Oops, 250 for uh, for two of them. And we got one sale at 500 as well. So in three sales, we got to a thousand a month In eight sales. We got to three thousand a month plus. And then in four sales, we got to three thousand a month plus. So um, so that's how the math works out. So if you are looking to quit your job fast, I would do it the second way instead of waiting years and years and years, because uh, honestly, like my mental health was not very good at the time. Um, I felt like I was on the verge of having some kind of like mental breakdown working the job that I worked. I didn't like working for uh, for anybody. I never been good at uh, jobs necessarily. Like I would work hard, but I wasn't good at like doing what other people wanted me to do. So um, so instead, I was like, if, if somebody could have told me within within two weeks, I could have financial freedom then I would have been open to hearing that even if I would have had to go outside my comfort zone and sell something expensive. If somebody had told me I could get to 3000 a month within three months um, and get to, he got to 2000 a month within four weeks. If somebody could have told me I would make two bands within, um, within four weeks, I would have done whatever it takes. If somebody had told me when I was at, at 200 followers, which I never was, I was already at 400 um, followers on Instagram when I first started trying to sell beats. But, um, if they said saying from 400 followers or 200 that I can make a thousand a month without waiting years and years to build up the fan base, like I did in the first method, then I would have taken them up on that offer so that I could quit my job faster so that I could experience freedom quicker and you can be way more creative. So, um, last thing I'll leave you with is what this does for you. So what does it do for you when you quit your job? The first thing that you realize is that you have an insane amount of time on your hands. Whenever you had to, you had to get up uh, and go to work. You don't work for eight hours. You work for eight hours plus an hour for your break, plus an hour to commute, plus an hour of getting ready, plus uh, an hour of unwinding after work. So really, an eight-hour day is going to be nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it's going to be minimum like twelve hours a day that you're thinking about work. Now, whenever you quit your job, what happens is you wake up and you go and do your marketing. So for me, it took me four hours of marketing a day. So I wake up around uh, around 10 o'clock and by 2 p.m., I'm done with, with marketing. And then from 2 p.m. to like 6, I may go and make some beats. So you have the next four hours making beats. And then after that, you uh, you know go to the gym cook, clean, all that kind of stuff take me about like two hours. And now uh, we have four, eight, nine, ten hours, but I wasn't thinking about working except for these four hours of marketing. So as soon as I get the marketing in a day, I could do anything I want. I have an infinite amount of options. And so that's the dangerous part is that you have to be good with your time. You have to be disciplined with these four hours to make the business work. And then the rest of it, you can do whatever you want to do. You can go any way direction you want. You can be as creative as you want. And that way, um, you know, I could I could go to a studio. I could go and, um, you know, I could go and visit family and, and you know, help them out and, and run errands and do whatever I want to do because I have this. I have time. And it's mental. You gain a lot of mental energy because you're not thinking about working all the time. You're simply thinking about how do I make better music? And so um, if you're if you really are passionate about music, go for it, go in and do it full time. So that's the first thing you realize. The second thing you realize is that you can make so much more money, especially with the second model. Like um, so with me, my, my best month ever making beats, I made 13,000. I worked about 80 hours a week um, to make that. It was very exhausting, but I was able to make 13K in a month. Uh, making beats. I've only replicated that one time before. Um, you know, I've only made over 10,000 a month uh, in three separate months ever in my music career off of uh, music. So um, 
Keep that in mind though, that your ceiling is way higher. At my job, the most I could ever make with overtime and all of that was around like 2,700 in the month. Um, I have worked sales jobs and stuff like that where I was making much more than that. You know, your, your income ceiling is much higher, but um, it's incredibly stressful. So my job wasn't too stressful. I just hated it. And I was making 2,700 a month, but then I moved into something that was not very stressful, but the income ceiling quadrupled. And so keep that in mind is that you can make way much, way more money. But if you're really lazy, like if you're just honestly really lazy, then don't expect to even hit this number. So you probably shouldn't quit your job. You should let somebody else give you tasks to do and then pay you money. So if you're lazy, then work for somebody. But if you're hardworking, then work for yourself. So that's the video. I hope that that was helpful as a breakdown and hopefully it wasn't too lengthy either. Let me know if this is a good length for videos, if this kept your um, your attention, if this was helpful or not. Leave some ideas for me of um, what to cover in the next video. But um, this is the exact strategy that I use was the first strategy. And the second strategy is what I've taught other producers to do. And you've seen the results from that. So um, if, you, if you want the four offers that I gave them um, that help them to scale their businesses up to a thousand a month, 2000 a month, 3000 a month, then comment offer on Instagram at Kobe sample source. And I'll send you over that course entirely for free. And if you want to work more closely with me, if you're like, yeah, I've seen your, your free courses. I know it's good. I know it works. I'm bringing in some money from beats and I am a serious, hardworking producer. I could do what Marvin's doing. I could do what Jeremy's doing. I could do what Kellen's doing. And you want to make $3,000 in the next 16 weeks and you want my help to get there, I would love to help you. But what I would want to do first is hop onto a free business audit call. And so on this call, it's about 45 minutes. And what I talk about on this call is really just asking you questions to diagnose what the main bottleneck is in your business. Then whenever we get to the solution, then um, if that is my program, then there is an investment associated with that. But if it is a good fit, then we could do that. We could do that. We could move forward with the investment. And if it's not a good fit, then I will point you to somebody that can help you or I will point you back to YouTube videos um, where you can learn for free as well. So um, if you want to hop on that free business audit call and you're ready to get one on one help, then click the link in the description or I will leave it in the pinned comment as well. And you can go ahead and book that for free, fill out the application, and then I will talk with you soon for 45 minutes, chop it up with you face to face. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.